What's up, Barnhill family, and welcome back to the channel. Yo, yo. So, Nick, the drama, the saga continues at Lightweight. Charles Oliveira has now come out and said that, quote, only a fool would turn down a fight with Conor McGregor. And this is in response to Conor's tweet post UFC 269 saying, mm -hmm. so when's the date with me and Oliveira? You got to imagine Justin Gaethje has pulled all of his hair out by now. Yeah. The UFC can't possibly let Conor jump Justin, can they? Well, yeah, crazier things have happened in this sport. And you know what? I think that Conor McGregor is still a few months away from a fight and a return. And I would like to see Conor return um, as a contender and yeah. not as a number one contender or in a title fight because uh, we've seen him in there a few times recently and he hasn't gotten his hand raised. Still did great business, still was very entertaining, but uh, wasn't able to get his hand raised in the and he didn't get the outcome he wanted. Um, but Charles Oliveira has done nothing wrong. He's a champion. He's beat the who's who, 10-fight win streak, longest in the entire sp uh, uh, sport. Mm -hmm. In, he's the king of the toughest division the sport's ever seen, and he, he, you know, he deserves a little bit of something. He's just had to go through Dustin Poirier, which is no easy feat. They're looking at uh, throwing him Justin Gaethje next, and then if uh, all things go according to plan, Islam Makashev after that. Like the guy does deserve a little bit of something. He's the king. He's the champ, and he deserves a big fat check as the champ. And nobody brings that more than Conor McGregor. Yeah, I think Charles certainly deserves a fun one. He's yeah. done nothing wrong. And it, quite frankly, neither has Justin Gaethje. And I think you're right. When you look at the time frame of how this all could shake out, Conor McGregor said he's not going to be able to really fully spar again until April. Yeah. So he's going to need a good two months of sparring at least before he's ready to go. So that if you have, if you just assume it's the beginning of April, you have all of April all of May, yeah. and then looking for a June comeback for Connor. I think Charles Oliveira, given the fact that he didn't take a whole lot of damage against Dustin Poirier, seems to be okay, got the submission win in the third round, that we will see him again probably sometime in March or April or something yeah. like that. Justin Gaethje was a couple of cards behind um, Oliveira, so he's actually going to have a longer period of time off than Charles does in between fights, presuming that they make that fight next. So I think the likely thing they will do is, is push on with the Justin Gaethje versus Charles Oliveira fight. But where it's going to become really interesting is if Islam Makashev can beat Benil Daryush and that happens to coincide with the same time that Conor McGregor is back and healthy and ready to go, yeah. do they slide the champion Oliveira a bone, which I think it would be well-deserved at that point in time. The guy became the champion. Seemingly, nobody gave him any credit for any reason. God, right. God knows why. The guy's got more submission wins than anybody in the sport. He's on, the better streak that, he's on a better win streak than anybody in the sport. If anybody's deserving of a good payday, it's Charles Oliveira. But I'm sure Ali Abdelaziz and the Khabib slash Makashev camp are going to have something to say about that. So I think the Justin fight is a little bit more clear cut. It's, it's a tough sell to take a guy who hasn't had a win at lightweight in, in the last three fights since 2018. He's had three fights, has not won a single one of them at lightweight. Tough to give him a, a, a undisputed title crack, but as you said, crazier things have happened. Yeah, and the, the interesting thing about this sport is everybody has a, a window of opportunity, and it it's really goes all the way through life, but fighting is more particular, and you can kind of see it shutting, and most people's window is open between the ages of about 25 and about 35, and it can be expanded five years either direction, but that's probably the bulk of right. the, the decade that matters the most, and Conor McGregor is uh, kind of coming up towards the tail end of his uh, you know, crazy run and the decade of uh, uh, opportunity. And while I do think we'll see Connor fight for a few more years, you got to juice that lemon for everything it's worth while you have it. And although there's not the same, uh, you know, aura around Conor McGregor and Mystic Mac and all of that stuff, and he's not able to win like he used to and, and kind of shock the world and make these predictions and then make them come to life. He is still the number one guy in the sport by a long shot. He still brings the most money, and this is a business. He still gives these guys who, you know, it, to the casual fan, are unknown. You know, a lot of people don't know who Charles Oliveira was, and he's wearing the belt right now. Right. So I feel like you got to utilize Conor McGregor as the unicorn that he is. He's so rare, he's so unique, and he brings so many eyes to the sport, which means he's bringing it to the, all the different people that you can line him up there with. 
which is why I'm kind of hesitant to see him in there uh, in these, you know, multiple trilogies. You know, we've seen him in there with Dustin three times. He wants to go four. We've seen him in there with Nate twice. He wants to go three. We've seen him in there with Max Holloway. Now they're kind of talking about maybe having a trilogy. I think that we need to spread the Conor McGregor wealth around a little bit and let as many different guys as possible fight him yeah. in as many different weight classes as he's willing to go. Uh, I think 170 is the the future home for Conor McGregor. But if they're saying that there's a potential chance for him to fight for a title, you'll see him suck all that uh, that water weight and muscle yeah. weight <laughs> off of him that he's currently putting on right now. And uh, we'll see him come right back down to 55 for a title shot. Oliveira deserves it. I don't. Uh, I don't think that Justin Gaethje should get jumped in this, but he is also pretty familiar with waiting around for a title shot if he needs to, and he's earned that respect from all the the brass at the UFC. So they're not really like Justin. You got to fight for us, or you're not going to get an opportunity against these guys. Uh, I I see Justin getting the next title shot. I honestly see Oliveira getting the job done with yeah. Justin. Uh, with Justin. And then I think Islam Makhachev and, and Benny Dariush are going to have to settle their business. Whoever comes out of that will likely be in line for the next shot. And that'll probably come in the summer, late yeah. summer. But I'm looking forward to a international fight week that has both John Jones and Conor McGregor on it yeah. as the top of the bill. And, you know, Conor McGregor is such a big star and you have to pay him so much money that it really only makes sense for him to be a main or a co-main. And uh, really that co-main thing is a hard sell. So... Uh, putting him at the top of the bill is kind of a necessity at this yeah. point. And I think Charles Oliveira deserves that. Yeah, Conor McGregor is a main event or bust type of fighter. Yeah. I don't see him fighting a co-main probably ever again. Right. It would be some very strange set of circumstances that would have to happen right. in order for that to take place. But as you said, the only way I really see Conor jumping either Makachev or Gaethje is if some sort of injury happens or some sort of schedule, scheduling conflict comes about. Yeah. Let's say Makachev defeats Daryush but gets injured in the process and has to have surgery. Then you see that. But if all things are, are equal and Makachev gets past Daryush without much damage and Justin Gaethje is ready to go in a reasonable amount of time, I think those are, are two people that stand squarely in front of Conor. But, you know, this, this is an ever-evolving thing things change all the time nobody thought Dustin Poirier was going to have the 2021 that he had and look what happened to him you know he's he's become a multi-millionaire many times over just from the money he's made in 2021 so this sport the narrative changes almost on a daily basis and that's what I love about it and speaking of the narrative changing Dustin Poirier has now come out and said all but his future's at 170. Yeah. He said, I don't think I'll ever make the 155 cut ever again. And I really am not that interested in a fight right now unless the opponent's name is Nate Diaz. Yeah. So this is another thing to talk about because Nate was a potential return fight for Connor. But I think if Dustin and Nate want to hash it out, let them do it. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a lot of uh, synergy between those two because of Connor McGregor and I would say that Dustin Poirier is a top five draw in the UFC right now. Yeah. You know, you got Connor, Nate, uh, game bread, and then maybe you go with Izzy and, yeah. and then Francis from- is getting there. The winner of gone Francis will become a top five draw, yeah. I think. But Dustin Poirier is well yeah. known now. He, you know, you see him all over everybody's YouTube channel. He's all, you know, he, he's becoming a household name yeah. for sure. And I think a, a match with him and Nate Diaz would be a lot of fun. It's kind of like two lightweights that are, you know, finding their footing at, at welterweight. And I think that Nate Diaz knows exactly how to position himself in the top of the divisions as far as up as he can get without winning fights and without yeah. fighting against the toughest guys. You know, Leon Edwards is absolutely one of the toughest guys. Might be the next best welterweight in the world behind uh, Kamara Usman but, and, and everybody thought that Nate Diaz at the very last second even though he was getting cleaned up all the rounds before that was about to win the fight so he does and he was yeah, yeah <laughs> he does just enough every time and then Dustin Poirier loses this fight and he gets called out by Nate Diaz and then now they're saying okay let's do this thing so I think it's a genius move on Nate's part I think that uh, there, there are some rare situations like um uh, uh, where where Conor McGregor could call somebody out that's not in the 155 division, get a win over them, and then it still have implications oh, in yeah. the 155 division, which is why I would say that Conor McGregor's best call out right now, if I was him, would be Nick Diaz. Yeah. I think Nick Diaz is a little bit too uh, long in the tooth. And after we saw him in there with Robbie Lawler, I think Conor would get the best of that fight, and it could happen at 185 or 
well, 170, likely 170. But um, I think that uh, Nick Diaz is such a big name and that has so much respect amongst the sport, and he's kind of tied to Nate because he's his brother, that we could see Connor win that fight as in his return fight and do it in spectacular fashion po- possibly. And then that be what he needs to yeah. jump right into a title fight at 155. But I think Dustin Poirier needs to move right up. He he lives bigger than Colby Covington, who's the number one contender uh, at at welterweight. He's he's a big guy, cuts a lot of weight to make 155. Has had two shots that didn't go his way, and I think the best thing he could go do is get a fresh you know coat of paint yeah. and see what he does at 170. Yeah, and I quite frankly think Dustin Poirier will do better at 170 than many people are giving him a chance to do. Just like he did better at 155 than 145. Remember, he moved up and and did better. Exactly, and Dustin's a very good boxer, and he's got heavy hands. I mean, Charles Oliveira won that fight, but it wasn't wasn't without some shaky knees in the process. Charles is just very tough, but Dustin is an extremely accurate and powerful puncher just ask connor just ask charles just ask anybody that has ask max holloway ask anybody i don't think anybody's come closer to sitting max holloway on his butt than dustin the diamond so i think at 170 you're going to see an even stronger and even more powerful now i understand there's hamza chamayev there there's kamaru uzman there's leon Mm -hmm. edwards there's killers at 170 no doubt about it but if you want to make some fun fights at 170 that just or that dustin poirier sorry can be competitive in, I think there's more than a handful of them. Yeah, the Diaz boys. You know, yeah. If he beats Nate, Nick might try to come answer for it. Yeah, Colby Covington and D- Dustin have been going back and forth for a couple of years now, yeah. and I would love to see that fight. I think apparently he dropped Colby with a body shot in sparring, <laughs> if you believe what Jorge Masvidal has to say. So yeah. even if that's not true... We're already building a storyline. Yeah, and then that BMF title, you can't ever forget about that. Let's just say, for fun's sake, uh, Colby Covington versus Gamebred Masvidal happens, and maybe they're the coaches of the Ultimate Fighter. They build that up, do it for the BMF title. Colby gets his hand raised in that, and then Dustin goes try to avenge the loss for the BMF. You know, there's a lot of fun things that can happen uh, for Dustin Poirier and for Nate Diaz if they stick around 170. I, I think as they get older in their careers, they don't need to keep cutting weight. And also... Nate's not going to be getting a title shot at 155 anytime soon. And now that Dustin's had two and he, and he got finished and choked in both of them, I don't see him getting a, a third one anytime soon. So I think that uh, 170 is the move for him. It's going to present a lot of new matchups, a lot of fun fights for him. And I think he actually has a good chance of winning a lot of them. I think you're right. Yeah. Well, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Drop us a comment and let us know how is this all going to shake out? Is Dustin and Nate... Are, are Dustin and Nate going to square off, rather? And is Conor McGregor coming back for a title shot? Or is the Irishman just wishfully thinking? Let us know in the comments, because we always love chatting with you guys there. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet and love all things combat sports, this is the place for you, and we appreciate you hitting that subscribe button and smashing that like button. Until the next one, have a wonderful day. Peace. Peace.